Welcome back to another lesson in Swift for Beginners. In the last lesson, we talked about optionals and unwrapping. So if you didn't get a chance to watch that one, I encourage you to go back and do that. In today's lesson, we're going to be picking up exactly where we left off, and we're going to be talking about conditionals. So let's start by getting rid of all of this and giving it a title of conditionals and getting right into it. So uh, let me just preface by saying this video will be a little shorter than the last lessons. That is, uh, it's a fairly simpler topic. So conditional, uh, kind of like the name implies, is a way to represent conditions in your code. And uh, you may or may not have seen this. Uh, it's more likely that you have if you have seen any other code elsewhere. This concept of conditionals is very common amongst other programming languages. But it is an if-else condition. So let's say we have a variable uh, x, and let's say it's 2. Let's say we want to check if, um, the, if x is bigger than 10. We can say if x is greater than 10, do something. We can also say if it's not, in other words, if this doesn't hold up, else do something here. Now, we can build on this, and you can actually build pretty big um, like pyramids of conditions. So we can say, else if x is greater than 20, do something. Else do something. So what's interesting about this is this condition will start at the top here, and it'll only go into one of these blocks. right? And what I call a block is this, this little space inside the curly where we can do stuff. Let's say x was 12. The problem with writing the conditional this way is, is x bigger than 12? Uh, rather, is 12 bigger than 10? It is. So do what's in here. Is, uh, is uh, 12 bigger than 20? It's not, so it won't come here. But what happens if we make this 42? Is 42 bigger than 10? It is. So we're going to come in here and stop. But is 42 bigger than 20? Well, it also is. But we never got the chance to come here. So condition statements are a way to um, test conditions against variables, but we want to make sure we write them in a hierarchical way where they kind of gracefully fall to the next thing you're checking. So the, a better way to write this would be, rather a correct way to write this would be, would, be, uh, would be to check 20 first, then 10, otherwise, you know, do something else. So what this would what this would rather make it safe to do would be is let's say we do 19. we can say okay is 19 bigger than 20 well it's not so let's go down one more but it is bigger than 10 so come into here so if if you recall from our last last lesson to unwrap an optional we did something as follows so let's say we have the x uh, is an int optional and it equals three and to unwrap it we did if flat value equals x, we can use value in here, right? Notice we did an if let. So this is also a conditional wrapped with creating a constant. And what this conditional is checking is if there is a value in this optional object x, put that value in this constant we created called value. And let's actually call this real number for sake of clarity. What we're going to say is put the actual value that is inside of x in this real number and come into this block. If this was nil for whatever reason, it's going to try to do this condition and say, hey, if there is an actual value, put it into this real number constant thing and come into this block. But of course, this is nil, so it'll never come into here. So that's the notion of conditions. Um, you can have a variety of condition uh, operators, and an operator is something like greater than, less than. Uh, in this case, this is optional checking. That's a conditional operator. It could be if something uh, get, is a, is divisible by something else. So in an earlier course, we did, rather in an earlier lesson, we did something along the lines of, we have this variable x, and we want to say if x percent 2 equals 0, this is a condition. So what we're doing here is we're saying if 2 can evenly be divided into x. In other words, there's a remainder of 0 come into here. So now this was 11. 2 can only be divided into 11 five times, but there will be a remainder of 1 
thus the remainder will not equal zero, it will not come into here. So uh, the point of like this little spiel is there are a couple different operators, um, greater than, less than, uh, and you can actually connect multiple conditions together with either a comma or an or statement or an and statement. And that's really powerful and important because let's say you wanna check um, two conditions on the same line and you wanna come into this block if either of those conditions hold up. So let's say we have var x and it's one and we have var y and it's 12. And we wanna say if x is greater than 10 or y is less than 200 come into this block. These two lines that are often called pipe operator symbols signify that if either this or this holds up in terms of the actual condition, you're allowed to come in here. Now similarly, rather inversely, you can use and. So here you're checking if this and this is correct, you can come into here. So oftentimes you'll see um, some conditions that are uh, you know, connected in this manner as to rather opposed to doing like one condition up here and then taking this and doing this and doing this. It's, it's kind of cleaner and nicer to put it onto one line and it helps to readability and to understand um, and to write more concise code. So that about does it for conditionals. Uh, I hope you found this lesson helpful and I really would encourage you to leave a comment to give me feedback so I can improve and ask any questions that you may have. Uh, leave a like on this video. Please do follow my other videos. It helps out a lot. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next lesson.